Penn State certainly will be favored in these last two matches. And Matt McCutcheon, the junior, going up against Cash Wilkie, unranked freshman. And that put the, uh, the fans back down in their seats. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when Brooks was not able to, to, to drive across and put, put, get nickel moving, putting weight back on his hands, uh, that, that was, that's dangerous. You just can't step up like that. And that's, uh, like I mentioned, it, that you just knew fireworks was gonna happen with the style matchup between these two guys. And, Nichols proving why he's one of the more dangerous wrestlers in a very tough weight class at 184. Now at 197, Matt McCutcheon, and this is why he's what, up at 197 instead of 184. You just saw it. Bo Nickel. So Matt McCutcheon jumping up to 197. One of those guys that, you know, a coach just loves. Uh, he's been a grinder. He's been right in there looking to be an All-American. Been there at uh, NCAAs. So it's round to 12. And, and uh, trying to trying to pull through at 197, which is a weight class when you get past Jaden Cox, that there's some room there to get on the podium. There really is, Tim. And you know, there's obviously uh, far from Minnesota, one of the uh, better wrestlers and yep. great scramblers, and and uh, you know it's kind of a one, two, you know maybe past. There's going to be a lot of room, just like at 165 really for the top eight. Top eight, you know, a lot of a lot of room for a guy like this to go ahead and, and move in there. So. You know, this is this Nittany Lion team. I mean, they. I think Kale says it best when he says that you know, energy is energy. And he's got his team thinking in terms of they love this coming to this environment, where you know whether they're rooting for you or against you, whether you get them at Rec Hall rooting for you or against you in Carver Hawkeye or the other venues that they go to. Energy is energy, and these these guys understand and know how to feed off of it, feed off of each other. And, you're talking about two coaches that understand the importance of energy uh, in a program and in arenas. And, of course, you talked about the Iowa Hawkeyes filling this place today, the great environment it is. And even Tom Brands would talk about it's so good for wrestling. Penn State has brought that is, as well. The, the sold-out rec halls, the sold-out uh, Bryce Jordans once or twice a year. And Oklahoma State's big crowd last week with the uh, meet against the uh, um, – Iowa, Ohio State brings a big crowd every time. It's just a, a great environment. The attendance is up. Just wow. You, you get a chance to see more wrestling on TV than, than, than we've ever had in the past. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I think wrestling, particularly with these top programs that are, that are bringing entertaining wrestling out, out there on the map, is... Uh, Makes the Nationals fun to watch every year. It makes the Big Tens, you know, just as exciting as the Nationals. Jim, what do you think? Going back to '84, real fast. I mean, yeah. we didn't get to talk about it very long, and so I think. Yeah. But I think people are looking forward to Bo Nickel and Gabe Dean. Maybe Bo Nickel can be one that could could give Gabe Dean a good run. He's a two-time NCAA champion. He's a great champion. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, uh, it's a weight class that, that Gabe Dean has been winning for the last two years. Yeah, I, I'd, still, I'd still put him as a, a, as a sizable underdog. Uh, but, you know, the thing, if you can put up a lot of points like Nickel can, and kind of the first points on the board will probably be the most important in that match. The thing about Gabe Dean, what he's able to do is he's solid on his finishes, doesn't get out of position. And so some of this other stuff doesn't work on him on, on, a, on a guy like that because he's he, remember Gabe Dean beat Ed Ruth there you go. Yeah, his, exactly. uh, his, 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 his freshman year so he's, he's solid and but I, I wouldn't count Nickel out of any match and but the important thing about that weight class is is it's a tough enough weight class is that both guys are going to have to go through from the quarters on it's going to be you know, really tough matches to be able to get to the finals to experience that so. Two, three to one with the escape there. Warning on Cash Wilkie, the uh, Richard freshman out of Battle Creek, Iowa. OA, BCIG High School. 11-5, Iowa State champion. Unranked freshman. Going up against Matt McCutcheon, the junior out of Apollo, Pennsylvania. Thought it'd probably be a low scoring, grinded out affair. But, uh, and that's what McCutcheon's gonna have a lot of his matches. He, he goes ahead and 
kind of works favorably for him. He likes to be square with his opponent, just like he is right now. Doesn't allow his opponents to get to his corner. You know, Jim, we're talking about the Big Ten and their dominance. Uh, looking at Dan Gable, and really it was a teammate of his out of West Waterloo, Dale Anderson, and Michigan State that got it all started 50 years ago. Michigan State won the NCAA title in 67. They were the first Big Ten team to do. That was the tipping point, and it's been Big Ten um, since then. Yeah, but, uh, in fact, uh, I, I believe, was, was, was that Pat Milkovich's first uh, uh, NCAA champ? No, he probably won no, it in 69. Yeah, or 70, but the... Uh, Actually, 71, I believe but it was. But Dale Anderson won it, and Michigan State Don won Beam. it. Don Beam. And yep. I think you're right there. And, and there's a book uh, that's uh, been written uh, about by Dale Anderson about that team and the first Big Ten team uh, to uh, uh, win the national title. And we'll talk more about that when we have Michigan State on uh, for uh, the, the BTN. But uh, um, it's interesting, the history of that um, and uh, how Dale Anderson and Dan Gable won state titles in the same year, even though he's a couple of years older at West Waterloo, and then they won national titles at different schools in the same year. And Michigan State getting everything started, and now it's Penn State, Iowa, Ohio State. Well, it was the first Big Ten school to win, but it was also that they, they, they broke the stranglehold of Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and Iowa State. And Iowa State, right. Grow up fast when you step in as a redshirt freshman at 197 for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Cash Wilkie up against a very solid and consistent wrestler, Matt McCutcheon. Three to two, still in this match. Yeah, we, we, minute left in the third period. We got into story time there, but it's like, uh, you know, it's still a match that's within range. McCutcheon. Moving forward, and of course, after that breathtaking splatel, Bo Nickel has taken the life out of this crowd. And, and you know, these are the these are the moments that you live for if you're the, the visiting team to come into an environment like this and win. And, and Bo, nice. nice duck and a takedown with 35 seconds left in the third period goes out in front. Cash Wilkie gives it the escape, so it's 4-4. No advantage time. Really well done. Very well done. Great takedown. 20 seconds left. And if it stays right here, we'll go into another overtime. That's what you see. Look, Taking a look at uh, Penn State corner there. They just can't fit, quite figure that one out. Jake Barner, the Olympic champion, one of the coaches in the Penn State corner. He even kind of lifted his hands like, what just happened? When, when, when are you going to, how'd you let that happen? Yeah. One minute on the clock. We're in sudden victory. Any score wins. Big, big moment for Iowa. They're not favored in these last two. And a win here would be, put them in striking distance, and anything can happen. We saw a stunner at 184, the first period pin by Bo Nickel. Shot by Wilkie, go around by McCutcheon, but Wilkie steps out, he's competing, as you said. 25 seconds left in sudden victory at 197. He's battling in there, and it, it, it's, it's clear that McCutcheon is settled. He didn't get a shot off in overtime. Looks like they'll go to the uh, two 30-second tiebreakers. Well, both, there's only not very much riding time amassed by either guy in this match, so Kutch is going to go down first. You just want your guy to battle in the top position. You have a plan of how you're going to, I'd attack the ankles. Right there, he kind of gets a little bit high. That was a switch. And it's a match, so the switch, two points for the reversal. They keep wrestling. It's two 30-second matches. They're getting the count right there. And it's a warning. 
Yeah, that's kind of a uh, one thing about that rule and it's not really comfortable with when you clearly can't elevate to get out of that position. That was might have been more of a, of a stalemate. Particularly when you have your uh, opponent, and I don't recall if he was or not, but, but pushing his head down in that situation. Now front trip, I like that trip. Jumps back in on the leg. Nice job in this situation by Matt McCutcheon. They call it, though. And, well, one point. So just like uh, a one-point escape, so it's six to five on that second warning and the one point for Wilkie. So uh, an escape here but would uh, tie it up, and they'd go to, and if nothing more happened, they could go back to a sudden victory. But getting the reversal with that, that, that stall call like that is the equivalent of a, of a quick escape there. You've got the riding time well, going in your yeah. favor. Yeah. So you just want to stay in the top position if you're a Penn State wrestler. Quick escape if you're Iowa. Right, right here. And, well, and he can't, yeah, yeah, he's in a situation with the stalling yeah. that he wasn't able to. Uh, the fact that Wilkie was able to get to his feet you know, really force the hand that that, that, that uh, McCutcheon had to let him go. Who's gonna Who's gonna go for it here, though? That That's that's the question I have. Who's gonna try to you know, make this work on the feet as they go back for a minute of sudden victory? You just never know what wrestlers and what matches are gonna make the big difference in a dual meet like this, and the answer is everyone. Yeah. So, we're back with a minute on the clock. Sudden victory. If there is any score, even a stalling, that would be the end of the match. First score wins in if it happens inside this one minute period. And I don't think McCutcheon is shot to well back into the uh, early third period or, or, or second period. This young freshman, Cash Wilkie, has got the crowd back into it, who is stunned by Bo Nichols' uh, first period pin of Brooks and uh, Sammy Brooks, and now Cash Wilkie trying to bring the fans to their feet here at Iowa with a, uh, would, it would be a uh, an upset for sure. Yeah. So, somebody's gotta make the determination that they, they, they want it. And we'll go to Two more 30 second tiebreakers. So, Cash Wilkie, the freshman from Iowa, will choose down. He's battling, at, and he's from Battle Creek, Iowa. A lot of fans from the hometown cheering him on from the, their their living rooms right now. The pride of Battle Creek trying to get an escape. He does. It's one point. He's out in front, seven to six. And he really needs to go after the takedown in the situation because there's 33 seconds, which is cumulative in the uh, ride out situations that uh, it's in favor of the Penn State wrestler McCutcheon. Quick escape. In the second set of tiebreaker periods. And the Hawkeyes out in front seven to six. And we'll go to the next tiebreaker 32nd period. You know, McCutcheon is aware that he has that, that, that riding time advantage and that will be the decision. Got to let him go. Yeah. go. Try to go from on the feet. Yep. You know, he's, he just he, he yeah. waited way too long. Yeah, was, I don't know what his strategy was there because it was not the right one. Well, it, did, it didn't really. Who's got time? Yeah. That's it. And so, in overtime, one point red. criteria for the uh, um, riding time which gives him one point. So McCutcheon wins eight to seven in overtime. Three more points for the Nittany Lions. 
who are out in front 21 to 11. 